Good morning. So previously we did a flight um, basically covering the VFR GPS side of the system for casual players. And I wanted to do kind of a similar thing for IFR. Now there's two different ways you can do IFR. You've got low altitude and high altitude. I'm doing a short jump from Colorado Springs up to Rocky Mountain Metropolitan. That's uh, DIA is over here. So it's not a big jump. It's maybe a two hour, two, three hour drive, if that. And so this should be like a one hour flight, if that. Um, basically, if I was pushing and doing all taxing and all that, but a one hour flight. So in this case, I would do low, uh, low altitude. Um, if I was flying from major city to major city, like say Dallas to Denver, then I would do high altitude, which would make, take me up into the 30s and 40,000 foot range. Whereas here, I'm probably gonna stay in the eight to 15,000 foot range. But I want to do this in IFR, and it's going to kind of change things up a little bit. So you can see it's already put some new icons up on the screen up here. So the first one that appeared is going to be a VOR station, which is just a radio station that I trans uh, that I can hone in on in more VOR flying. And then these are my waypoints that I'm going to be flying, which will lead me in to the airport, and then I will land on the runway. Now, I have a few different things that I can do. This is fine if I want to fly this kind of similar to how I did the GPS one. I just fly the route and I go there. No big deal. It'll be in my computer and it won't be a problem. I can also set out some departures through different runways and things like that, but I'm just going to do direct for the moment. Now, on arrival, if I zoom back into my runway here, I'm currently slated to land on runway 30 right. Now I've got a bunch of different options that I can do. I've got it set to direct right now, but if I want to really have some more fun, then there's all these other different waypoint and arrivals that I can pick from. Now I'm coming in on three. So I'm gonna pick the three right approach and you can see now it brings me right into the runway on that system. And you can see it changed my waypoints a bit as well for no good reason. <laughs> this is where some of the bugs tend to happen, but what it's likely doing is getting me up and out of a different pattern. So I was flying direct. In this case, I'm going down and then heading way out and around. And that, that really doesn't make any sense to go that ridiculously far out and around just to get to the airport. I mean, I'd be wasting twice the fuel so the way some of these things are picked is still a little bit broken usually there's a secondary approach like there would be if i was going to denver and i don't know if i'm able to actually remove any of these i think okay i can good so I don't mind going out and a little bit out of my normal way to join my waypoints, but this is just a little bit insane. And sometimes, depending on weather and other aspects, this may be what happens. These, this may be the only path that I have to get out of the city. But what I'm going to do is this, fly out and around, hit my waypoint and go up in there. All right, now for approach, you can do automatic, which just basically leaves it the way it is. And then you have a few other options. You've got your VOR approach, or you've got your ILS or your location or your other navigation options. So I'm going to actually pick ILS. And what this is going to do is you can see it now changed my arrival here at the end to bring me straight in on the runway. So what I'm going to be doing is basically I'm going to, when I hit this section down here, be pretty low to the ground. I need to be. Hopefully um, ATC has me low to the ground. And when I finish this left bank, I should be able to pick up the localizer and on the screen of the airplane, we'll, we'll call it out and we'll see kind of what it's doing. And that if it works, should guide me down into the runway. It won't get me all the way down, but it'll basically keep me on the glide slope fairly reasonably all the way down to the pretty close to the runway when I would cut autopilot off or it would turn off on its own and I would have control. So that's the goal. Now the airplane I'm gonna fly is the Citation CJ4. It's an airplane that works fairly well. We saw previously that I could pretty decently handle in it now with the current control setting adjustments that I've made. I love the Citation Longitude, but this plane is really twitchy still. I actually did a flight in this at minus 80 and I was still 
almost doing barrel rolls. It was ridiculous. And I wasn't even at the minimums. I came off autopilot at about 170 knots, well within the range of the longitude's abilities, and it was really crazy. So we're going to stick to the tried and true CJ4 for this mission. We're doing a morning flight. Let's check my ceiling here. So altitude is 12,000 feet, not a big deal. So this they will take me up. The biggest problem I have is right here. I'm going to hit this last waypoint and basically plummet from 7,000 feet way down. So I hope they bring me down a little more smoothly, but we'll see what happens. All right, so that's the flight plan. Now, the longer the flight, the more intricate, whatever you're doing, the more you will have navigation to deal with. But this should be fairly straightforward. And as a casual player, this is all going to get plugged into my plane automatically. If you were going to take this from the casual player into more the sim style player, you would use a site like Sky Vector, where you could plot the same thing out. You would notate all of your air frequencies. You'd notate a couple alternate landing places, and then you would manually set up your radios, your flight computer, all that stuff, doing your pre-flight checklists. You'd have all these other things to do. But again, we're doing casual because I want to have fun. I want to play the flight simulator but I also don't have time to actually go through a complete pre-flight setup on the real site. And Sky Vector is awesome. And if you have the time to do that, I recommend doing it at least once. It's a lot of fun to go through and do a whole proper flight, but it is very time consuming. And again, we're just trying to go through this as the casual player, but still enjoy our flight and our time in the game. So in this one, I'm not going to do a pushback. I'm just going to spawn on the runway and we'll take a look at some of the settings. I'm not going to go deep into the flight computer. I'm not going to go anything crazy like that, but there will be some pre-takeoff pre things that we need to do. Colorado Springs Tower Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra ready to go runway 17 left IFR to Jeffco. Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra cleared for takeoff runway 17. All right, so we are on the runway. Planes fired up, ready to go. Let everything load in here. Maybe. Doesn't seem that it wants to uh, register my mouse input properly, but that's all right. There it goes. Okay, it took a minute. All right, so we're in the system, and now there's a few things that I need to look at. First and foremost, let's oops, get this flight yoke out of my way, and we're going to come over here and look a bit at the flight computer and we can see that we've got our nav data all of our information in there I can go into the index I can look at my takeoff and my approach and position data and you can go through and look at some of these um, because I didn't fill it out I don't think it's gonna let me go through everything on here um, yeah, I'm not at a gate, so anyway. That's the basics of the front. You can come in here and you can plug in different waypoints information, type it all in, direct, and do all these other fun things. So there's a lot of neat things that you can do in it. What we need to worry about right now is making sure that we are tuned to the right system. So this says FMS1. That tells me that we are currently configured to the right flight plan. If not, we can come up here to the system and cycle through the nav. So there's VOR, VOR, and FMS. So we're set up for FMS. Um, there's some other menus and things that we can do in here, but I'm not really going to mess with that right this second because we need to get some other things configured. So first and foremost, I'm going to turn on half bank to get, get your on. I'm going to turn on... Actually, I don't really need altitude, that's fine, but I am going to uh, set it up. My altitude is likely going to need... That's 10,000. I think we're going to end up starting around 4.5, so I'm just going to get it kind of close. That way I can trigger it. Oh, see, never mind. We're already at 6, so yeah. I'm just going to set you to 10,000 for giggles, and I'll play with you when we're done. Next, I am going to turn on the yaw damper. Okay, we're having some issues with autopilot. It doesn't want to go on. Okay. Let's also turn nav control on. You can see my flight system going up and down. This is kind of how you can change your 
climbing airspeed, uh, I feel a little more comfortable using the actual vertical speed indicator, but um, that's just how fast you want to fly up to that. I could be saying that slightly wrong, but that's okay. All right, so we are cleared for takeoff. We're good to go. We're going to end up uh, taking off to the south, and then we'll make a left turn around to meet our waypoint so I don't fly back over the airport. Let's make sure everything's up. Lights are on. That's all good. You are flaps. You're already set for takeoff. So we are ready to rock and roll. And the target will be that once I get airborne, essentially, we will kick on autopilot. So the two that I'm going to need is vertical speed, and then I'm going to have to hit my vertical speed indicator. So I'm going to dial that up a little bit anyway. Go ahead and get that set at a decent speed and then it'll take me straight up to my speed. All I gotta worry about is hitting autopilot and then I should be able to kick on the yaw damper. So, I think we're good to go now. Pop outside the plane for a second. Take parking brake off. And let's go. Throttle up and get out of here. To slow down fairly quickly once we get moving. Oop, I got a bit of a wind. I always go into overspeed on this sucker pretty quickly. Not liking that crosswind, but that's alright. Already starting to get airborne, so we're gonna go up. Oh boy, that is rough. Let's kick on. Climbing is good. Up, Springs flaps. Departure Cessna Alpha Sierra X-ray Golf Sierra is at 7,800 feet, climbing 12,000 feet. Cessna Alpha Sierra okay. X-ray Golf Sierra Colorado Springs departure continue to by me as planned. Altimeter 29er decimal 9er 2. Okay, so we're going up to 12,000 feet. Vertical speed indicator's alive. We need to throttle back a bit here so that we don't go immediately into overspeed. And we need yaw damper on if it'll do it. Okay, yaw damper is currently broken apparently. I guess the maintenance guy didn't do that, but we got half bank going, so hopefully we're okay. We got some clouds as we come around. I didn't want to turn this way because I didn't want to cross the, over the runway, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Alright, we are on our way this beautiful morning. Should be able to turn off the lights here. Landing lights off. We can keep logo lights on. That's fine. No big deal. Ah. Alright, so that was pretty good on takeoff. Now you can see down here, doo -doo -doo, this is my heading line of course, and here's the path that I'm going to come around from my airport to where we're going. There's different ways that the plane can get there. I was just going to have it turn left and kind of come north and slot in, but we went around to the right, which is fine if that's what we're cleared to do. We were told just to head to our waypoint. And the plane should start banking left here. There you go, you can already see it slowing down. As it gets us ready to intercept, and then we will continue off to our next waypoint, which is, I think, five nautical miles off. And then we'll make our left turn and head right up in. So not a big, big deal or a big flight, but that's pretty much that part. Now, if IFR is going to work, I'm sorry, ILS, if ILS is going to work, when I kick it on, we'll see a pink bar here on the right and a pink bar here at the bottom, or and not really a pink bar, but there's going to be some dots, and it's going to look more like a leveling device. And what it's going to show on the left is our position to the left or to the right of the runway. The pink dot represents us, and we want to have it centered. Same on the right. Too high, we're too high. Too low, the air runway's below us so we need to angle ourselves and be basically pointed down the runway and that's going to be the target goal 
and I'm really hopeful that it works because the last few times I've tried the ILS system didn't quite work right. Now I may have caused a bit of a problem on that because I did turn it on once I was in the glide slope and then I think the um, the, 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 the ATC person told me to descend and maintain an altitude so I used the altitude system to actually do that which I think overrode the approach system so we'll see if I can avoid having that happen again and if you notice on my window I've got some ice build up so I want to come down here and see if I can find the ice control I don't remember exactly where everything is Where's the DI system? I do not know. There it is, ice protection. Let's turn on. Okay. Let's get all the ice stuff going. You can see it's already melted off my window here. Uh, what's the caution? What did I do wrong? Oh, it's just telling me that I've got the heater on. Let's acknowledge the caution alarm. It's not a big deal. We want to make sure that we don't ice up on the flight. All right, so I love the look of these clouds. The only thing I wish is that they wouldn't just maintain the same weather pattern across the entire flight. I did a, a flight the other day in the uh, latitude from Dallas to DIA, and... Um, I had these clouds selected, but it was the same thing. It was gorgeous on takeoff. It was great out of Texas, but then the weather pattern never really updated. So I think that was kind of the only downside to it. Once you select a weather pattern, it's that way across the globe instead of scattered randomness, which is what I would really prefer to see because, well, clouds do that. But we'll see. We'll see what they patch in. Okay, you can see my left turn coming. I hit the waypoint, and my plane started to turn. All right, so no change to my altitude, no change to anything. Again, this is a low-level flight, so we shouldn't really need to go up and down all that much. I've got my VFR map up on the other screen so I know kind of what's coming and what's going on. You can see all the different waypoints that I'm going to hit and all the different turns that I'm going to make as I come around. So the one I need to look for is BAAWL. When I make that left turn, I should be able to start picking up the runway because there it is. So once I get there, we'll see what happens. Now, Alki, Alike, or whatever it is, when I pass that, that may be the point of approach but we'll see what happens so again we're making a flight and part of the reason I call this stuff more on the casual side is because you have the ability to allow the computer to do stuff for you which is what I've got it doing right now I've got it managing the radio communications and helping me do my checklist that way I can just sort of kick back and actually enjoy the parts that matter to me so right now on this flight as you could see, I was focused on dealing with the de-icing, I was focused on getting the autopilot configured and running, and at that point, I'm able to just enjoy the flight. Now I've got to monitor things. If I want to go up a little higher, I can definitely ask. I don't really think that autopilot's going to come in and say, or the uh, system's going to come in and say, no, you're not allowed to go up any higher. See, I'm certainly fighting a wind on this leg. Jeez. Plane's turning hard. All right, now this flight would be a lot shorter if I hadn't had to make that kind of wonky maneuver there, but that's okay. Windy. We're maintaining good airspeed. I do like to ride a little faster, so just to kind of get us there, but that's pretty much the basics of it. At this point, I'm kind of free to enjoy what's happening. If I'm in the middle of needing to do some other things, I can alt tab out of the game, let it continue to fly for me, continue my journey, and I'll enjoy that.
Now what I'm watching right now are the fact that I was headed back towards the mountains. I'm going to fly along the range a little bit, but I'm still pretty low to the ground, so I need to be very careful. But I don't think I would be quite this low, because I think ground level was, what, 6,000 feet? Um, so I'm really only 6,000 feet above the ground right now, so got to be careful. But we're making our next turn. Got a couple of waypoints to go through. And I can just kick back and enjoy the, the flight. Uh, you're gonna kill me. So before I let ATC kill us, um, one of the things I wanted to call out was that you can use the automated system, the AI, to help you on takeoff. And then once you kind of get airborne and are flying, you can take over the radios if you want to give yourself something to do while you fly and, and have some fun on that. So there, there are other options. There are other things you can do to kind of ease yourself more into it. And then once you're ready for it, you can be a little more prepared. And looking at Sky Vector to plot out kind of what the frequencies are to kind of see what's happening and everything else that's going on whoa is not a bad idea it does help you kind of understand what's going on so it's not really all new to you um that seems really low and again because i'm on nav the system's going to start taking me down which is good other than i need to throttle back i am very nervous about this altitude i'm coming down to but okay Alright, um, yeah, that kind of made me lose my train of thought as I'm worried about crashing into the ground here. Let's make sure we don't go into overspeed. And I'm very worried about the ground coming up on us. Do not think we would be sitting quite this low, but anyway. You can look at Sky Vector just to kind of see the waypoints, plot things out. You can change the views on there. When you first look at Sky Vector, it's kind of terrifying if you've never seen an aviation chart before. Just all the different obstructions and things that are visual, visible on the screen that kind of tell you everything that's happening. So just keep in mind, you can see frequencies, you can click on the airports, you can open the waypoints, and you can get details about them and all that stuff. So it is very nice and handy, especially if you're trying to learn and see everything. And especially if you want to try and transition into doing some of the, the, the work yourself, especially in situations like this where you're, you're not really having to do all that much. You're just kicking back and enjoying the flight. And once you've got it set up, there isn't much to do. That's some hefty wind kicking me around before I got to that turn. All right, we're coming in over southern Denver now. You can see the airport. I believe that's it right in front of me way out there. I've got to make a bit of a right turn. I feel like I'm way too low at this point, but again, they could just be bringing me down under the clouds. 7,000. I'm getting nervous about the altitude. We are going to start slowing down a bit here. Coming in right over at 25, I think. That's kind of cool. I recognize some of these areas. Getting bounced around, man. Alright. See DIA way off to the right. Downtown Denver right in front of me. And... Peace Meal Tech 9 is over by my airport. It's a Table Mountain on my other monitor. Okay, 
Nisper. Alright, so once we hit NSPYR, that's our transition to the ILS approach. And that should get us fairly close to when I can kick on the approach system. But I'm going to wait till I'm a little bit closer. That's thing in this wind. Okay, we're coming up close on NSPYR, which looks to be around downtown Denver. DIA way out there on the right, Rocky Mountain on the left. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and extend my first set of flaps. Nope, I'm not. I forgot this plane doesn't like that. I got used to the uh, latitude, I think, where you can uh, actually drop a set of flaps before you need to throw the gear out. I'm all by it. Okay, I see BAAWL coming up on the system, so I need to get back inside the cockpit here. Alright, so you can see now I've picked up the ILS system. I haven't turned approach on, but you can see here's what it's saying. The runway will be too far to my right, which means I'm just picking up the signal and means I need to go farther to the right. And then the runway's up. The glide slope is above my position, so I'm too low. And that's also kind of what this thing is saying. You need to go up is what it's telling me, so I am definitely too low for that system. but. All good. We're making our turn past Nisper now, so we're transitioning into BAAWL, which will be my approach. Coming up on I-70, I believe. You can see the runway. It's the Purina Dog Chow building. Love that wispy cloud just vanishing right there. Ah, oh, that is so cool. All right, so again, I'm not going to kick approach on until we're actually pointed there. My speed. I don't want to be too slow, especially when I kick flaps on here. But I feel like it's getting very close to time to turn the flaps on. Turning on approach. There's my runway over there. Alright, so you can see the pink dot moving over to the center now. We are still way too high. So we're doing just fine on the approach portion. Again, I'm just going to let us get lined up, pointed straight. I'll drop the gear here in a moment. I'm going to monitor my speed. Alright, let's kick on approach and see what it does. Okay, approach mode is on now. I don't think it's going to bypass altitude or anything like that. Maybe I should take altitude off. I don't think I need to. I think approach can handle it. I don't know. I'm going to let approach fly my plane right now. We are headed in. Alright, let's drop my landing gear. Okay. 
Okay, I don't know what happened with that guy. Okay, you can see now that one's come in. And there it goes. So we came into the approach system now, and the ILS is... Not ILS, the system is trying. I don't know what the heck it's doing right now. Why are we flying all over the place? Holy broken ILS. What are you doing, plane? Where are you going? Oh my goodness, you're just totally hosing me right now. Uh, yeah, we are screwed. So, that's not a great visible view into the uh, ILS system. Gives you a bit of an idea of what it's supposed to do. It uh, is actually supposed to fly the plane to a degree. I think my taking over kicked autopilot off. Nope, it didn't. Alright. Don't you dare touch the controls, you stupid computer. You don't know what you're doing. Alright, so we're doing alright. We gotta get back in track with the runway now. We're gonna go a little high here. I need to get my thrust back up. Let's start my little bank. Ooh, need more bank. Okay. I don't know if the autopilot's fighting me or if I'm fighting it. I think I'm just fighting the wind. But I really feel like I'm about to go way short. I need more thrust is what I need. There we go. AOA showed me I was doing fine for a second, and then I went off. Way too low. Come on, catch it, catch it. Autopilot just disengaged. This is where I should be taking over. Pay attention to the screen, not your AOA. Flare, 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 gonna hit hard. Gonna hit hard. Parking brake on there. That's a controller issue. Alright, so two things happened on that. My altitude on the approach, if you saw, was much better than any of the others if you've watched any of my videos where I came in way short almost every time. I did manage my altitude a lot better this time. But Ultimately, the success of that landing was down to the approach system controlling my altitude properly. Detroit Metro Ground, Cessna Alpha Sierra, X Ray Golf Sierra, taxi to party. Um, come on. Cessna Alpha Sierra, X Ray Golf Sierra, taxi to general aviation parking using taxiway Echo Cross Runway Tree Alpha. So, taxiing to general aviation parking using taxiway Echo Cross. There we go. So, the autopilot totally screwed up my left and right heading. I don't know what it was doing. Maybe it just didn't catch the localizer in time and I didn't do something right, in my opinion. Um, I don't know. That could have just been it acting really screwy, but I've had a lot of issues with autopilot across the board, so I don't know if it's just related to those bugs or not. But I have no idea why it was flying the plane all over the place just trying to stay in it. Now, I know that's kind of how the approach system works. The ILS just sends out a cone of signal that the plane tries to fly down. But that was ridiculous. I don't know why it just did like a 90 degree turn away from the airport and then would flip me around and go back towards it. That just makes no sense. So, not too pleased about that occurrence. But, again, not the end of the world. We'll be fine. I missed my turn. Um... Altitude wise, so in watching my approach, I was doing left and right all the time. I managed to do most of the left and right turning to keep me kind of on track. I think it did help a little bit because I did come in fairly straight without having to do a lot of crazy adjustments and corrections to everything. Um, 
but the vertical part I really didn't do all that much other than kick the flaps on and then nose down to keep me from shooting sky high and then a little bit of lift to try and keep myself from coming in short but I think that the autopilot was handling most of the vertical until it kicked off at the buzzer there and that's when you kind of saw the problems occur but overall I think that went very well that gives you a good idea of what the ILS and IFR systems can do especially for a casual player and how much fun you actually can have in going through and playing like this because there's a lot of fun things that you can do and this gives you a whole new ball game of activity and things that you can fly with when you start using the systems to this degree and you don't have to be a genius you don't have to learn each individual airplane's system overall you just got to learn some of the basic controls for the autopilot as well as the the screen so that you can make sure you've got the fms selected and if you're doing that and what the buttons do on the screen so for for just the autopilot outside of that you don't really have to learn a lot so casually you can easily do this and you can have a ton of fun for doing some real flights doing some simulation without having to worry about getting all into it so hope you found that useful thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time